Hey guys, welcome to this very special first drive video of the brand new $112,000 GMC EV Hummer. And I'm here at GM's Milford Proving Ground where they actually taped up my phone because, well, you don't want to see those fancy Corvettes. But we're going to get to drive that and actually I'm going to be one of the first journalists in the world to drive that. So I'm pretty excited. And in this video we're going to try out all the cool features. We're going to go 0 to 60. We're going to try crab mode. We're going to try WTF mode. I think that means Watts to Freedom mode. We're also going to go rock crawling and we're going to take it on a high speed course to see how it does when, well, we're going way too fast. So come with me. I'm going to roll the entire raw video because I thought it was that interesting. But unfortunately, since we are here at GM Proving Ground, they have rules and one of them is I have to wear a mask. So a little muffled, but I apologize. It's well worth it. Let's go. Eight thousand pounds. A fair amount. Yeah, a lot. It weighs a lot. We have a lot of normal force for grip. Yeah, and that's not just because we're in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's partially because I'm in it. <laughs> no, because I'm in it. So you want me to just forward? Yeah, you might want to throw your window up though. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, we we'll we will kick up and dirty. some dust. How far should I go? A lot. How we'll we'll come to a stop at the. Okay, there. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. for drifting <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see that in a little minute as well here, yeah so um okay so that was just uh kind of the, the warm-up right so yeah. uh how the acceleration feels on gravel again these tires are developed with this in mind right so so, so I've, I've been lucky enough now over the last 10 years to probably take every new vehicle because we do the testing zero to 60. yeah so my, my butt is pretty calibrated uh -huh. to that and i would say that was probably like four and a half seconds my guess your guess is quite but good it was it was right around there your, your guess is very good yeah <laughs> i've been doing it too much now yeah right, so we're gonna go a little bit tell. of off-roading here yeah so we're gonna go up this hill and then i'd like to ask you to just stop once we get up on the top of the hill because uh, it'll be a little bit of a steep down okay and does this have like uh kind of terrain management where it's good yeah so um okay. it does yeah it has terrain mode and we'll actually show you that in a minute here okay so obviously you're staring at the top of trees right now yeah. in the sky. And that um, could be nothing in front exactly. Of us. Yeah. We don't know what's in front of us, right? You got now uh, showing the 18 different camera views here. So a surround view, a front view in front of you, and then if we want, we can even go to the underbody. Yeah. Where where do you have the camera? Is there a camera mounted underneath the vehicle? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Wow. Yep. It's just outside of the roost of the tires. Okay. Um, but it's mounted centrally in a skid plate. Um, and then there's a rear facing one as well, which is just next to it. So this would be incredibly useful on a place like, I don't know if you guys know, but there was a big story that just came out where somebody had uh, driven a Black Bear Pass in a Bronco oh, yeah. Sport the wrong so, way. Uh, and then, you know, try to turn around and unfortunately went off. This would be very useful. Absolutely. I was uh, I was doing Black Bear Pass a couple of years ago and we were following a Raptor. And there's really only like two scary parts. There's the kind of part where you come down next to the waterfall. And then you make this serpentine turn and there's a rock there, right? And so you got to make, and I swear this Raptor had to make a 200 point turn. <laughs> Seriously. Cause it, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this would be very useful for that because you could actually see where the, you know, the the, the terror terror starts and the yeah, spot ends. Right, yeah, for sure. And yeah. and absolutely you'll you'll see in terrain mode too our rear steering. Yeah, you can actually steer the rear faster than the front. That's uh, cool. Which is really cool on switchbacks. Now for $112,000, you do get some really cool features. Most cars, if you think about it, have two, maybe three of those little squirty things, you know, that squirt fluid onto the windshield, maybe two in the front, one in the back. Well, this one has four. And GMC demonstrated how you use that fourth one because, well, it squirts on a camera that lets you, you know what, let me just cut to the video. Um, Should we go down? Yeah, go ahead. Let me clean this camera for you first. So oh, you I was wondering about that. Here. Yeah, that's cool <laughs> that you've got a little water squirter down there. Holy cow. You guys yeah. have thought of a lot. Tried to think of everything. So yeah. how many squirters does this have? Three? Actually, two, one in the back and one underneath? Exactly. So four squirty things. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Maximum that could, squirters. That, that could be my headline. <laughs> <laughs> 112,000, you get four. <laughs> That's funny. We're, we're going to go to the left here. Yep. So we're just going to follow uh, this this trail. Okay, I won't go in the mud. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, Keep it clean. Yeah, so. Right now, what if you just give a little bit of steering input as we're going through here, yeah. what you're going to feel is actually the rear is moving uh, at about a 0.6 to 1 ratio to the front. 
So it increases your maneuverability um, some, yeah. but not quite to the max. We'll, we'll give it the max when we're in that terrain mode, that low speed, technical, uh, kind of tight, think switchback and uh, tight trails. So um, you have the flexibility uh, from the driver's seat to pick whatever you want. Yeah, that's cool. And you see, once again, the cameras are not potatoes. Yeah. Which is, which is always nice, you know, because it's always hard. I gotta be honest, it's always hard to tell how good a resolution of a camera is until it gets a little bit, you know, lower light situations. Yeah. And then it starts to pixelate. But, you know, in this bright sunlight, these are very sharp. Very sharp and in off road and train mode will actually keep it on for you at yeah, higher great. speeds. Yeah. So we're gonna come up to the right here. There's gonna be two cones. We'll put the vehicle in between. Uh, and these two other kind of on the right, yep, right up against the side here. And then we're just gonna do a tight circle. So we're gonna do a circle inside those cones. Okay. So just go ahead and pull forward. And then start turning. And then uh, go ahead and just start cranking it in. Wow. That's you said 37 feet, right? Oh, yes. I went over a cone guy, sorry. Yeah, one of, them, one of them got moved. We'll have to reset those. Yeah, yeah. I got. A, I started turning a little bit too late, but 37 feet, right, you said? Yeah. A turning radius with, is this maximum 10 degrees of uh, articulation on the rear wheel? Of the rear, yep. Yeah, 10 degrees, that's pretty crazy. Yep. And then in the, um, in the um, SUT, right? Yeah, in the, in the SUV. In the SUV, you, yep. you get 35 degrees, right? How come, how come you get more... Better turning radius. Shorter wheelbase okay, than that right. one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. This this is like I want to say this is like like you said, Chevy Bolt turning radius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bolt, Chevy Sonic, uh there's there's a bunch. I mean, I, I, equivalent to. I gotta ask because this is, you know, this is also part of what we do. What's this do for towing? Have you guys tried towing with it? How sure. Does, how does it affect towing when you can, you know, because, because towing is always yeah. tricky. So let's say you're backing up and now both wheels are turning either in phase or out of phase. Yeah, so you have the ability to do whatever you're comfortable with. So this will just be a slow one, right, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you, you, can, you can either uh, switch to fixed rear steer if yep. you want, you know, traditional, uh, or you can utilize um, the rear steering as well, so you have the maneuverability. It's up to you to, to pick whichever you want, whichever you're comfortable. Have you with. tried towing with it? Sure. Oh yeah. How does it back up? How does it? Is it? Is it a game changer? It, it's easy. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Yeah. It does really well. Yeah. So then. Yeah, you because know, I'm thinking of like the typical usage. You're trying to back a boat up down the ramp, exactly. right? And now you got to get, get get the. That's what I tow with. Is yeah. I, I yeah. tow my boat everywhere. And, so. And, and have you have you announced towing? How much is this towing? Have you announced that yet? Uh, we have not yet. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing soon. it's more than six. Would that be fair? <laughs> and I mean six thousand. Yeah, you're not using units, so yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> not six pounds. <laughs> um, so if you want, we can come to a stop here okay. uh, between these cones, yeah. and then we're gonna show you crab walks. Now you may be wondering, what other party tricks does this truck have up its sleeves? Well, it's got a thing called crab mode. In essence, the front wheels and, get this, the rear wheels also steer up to 10 degrees. And they can either steer in phase or out of phase. Let me show you. So, okay. right now, Al mentioned, we'll put it in park uh, to enter it now. That's going to be going away. But once we're in park in the center, uh, the steering wheel is centered, yeah. we're going to hold the rear steer button. And this graphic will come up. Wow, look at that. So now that it kind of closed the circle there, yeah. that's your cue that... Uh, Can you turn this, this down for the cameras? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Cool. Keep going. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so um, you're now in it. So I, I think uh, in this kind of open area here, maybe one of the best ways to just kind of get a feel for it, yeah. just keep your hands on uh, nine and three, okay. and then just back and forth without taking your, your hands off the wheel and just start driving forward a little bit and just feel what that does with the vehicle and you'll you'll get the kind yeah, of yeah, you couldn't do that with the yoke did you think of a yoke that's true <laughs> that's, that's true that, that's something that's true <laughs> that is crazy <laughs> <laughs> phase out above uh, 15 miles an hour here so yeah, if you stay low speed okay. <laughs> it's like you know what it's like it's like being on ice yeah you know what I mean it feels like uh, the car is 
is floating down an ice rink. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to take a bunch of cars on ice, uh -huh. and of course, you know, and doing tire test, right? And this is kind of what it feels like when you lose control of it. Yeah. Right. Where the where it's the, a, where the I'm not saying I'm losing control. I'm saying that's the a feeling. It's really crazy. It's so this is um, this is kind of fun for obviously you know scaring your friends and neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I could also see it being very useful uh, under certain conditions right so let's say you're off-road and there's a big boulder up ahead uh, this is kind of a cool way to move the whole thing sideways mm -hmm. versus having to you know do that right exactly exactly uh, so it, it would keep you from hopefully like puncturing a tire yeah unless yep. there's another big boulder over there right <laughs> right the beauty is though we give you that that, that uh, adjustability from the driver's seat right so yeah. if you want if you need that for that uh, scenario you got it if you want to go back to normal which all you gotta do is press it one more time, and you're back, and you're back into auto. Is, is there any other car that does this? I can't think of any other car. No. What was it? What was the GM that had um, rear wheel steering? What, what truck was that? The Quadra? Was it the yeah, the Quadra, Quadra steering steer, yeah, came yeah, with yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but did that crab walk? That didn't crab walk. It did not. <laughs> I didn't think so. No. Yeah. Nope. Colorado, as you guys know, we love to do a lot of rock crawling, and GMC thought of that. 16 inches of ground clearance with the air suspension at its maximum height, 32 inches of water fording. But best of all, at least in my book, is it comes from the factory with 35s, but it's ready for 37s. For all of you guys who want to, you know, go a little bit more badass. So right. we're gonna we're gonna take a right here. Yep. We'll go off to the uh, the rock bed. Okay. Cool. We'll get some rock crawling. Yeah. This is uh, this is a fun one. So I, you, know, you guys have been in Colorado, you've been in Moab. What, what do you take away from that? What, what, how, how do you make the truck better by doing this real world testing? So honestly, you're you're looking at where are we getting the torque? Are yep. we putting it where we need it? Um, you know, the I say like a a rear differential, a center diff, and a front diff are kind of like a dumb system, right? They right. just they're coupled and they find or uh, uncoupled, yeah, straight. where the torque needs to go. Yep, straight. Uh, we'll go up towards that black truck there. Okay. Yeah. Um, in our case, we're constantly monitoring, right? Slip and um, is the traction, uh, is the torque going where we need it? Um, and you kind of refine it, refine it, refine it. Did you guys, you guys bench, is there anything to benchmark? And if so, what did you benchmark? You know, ZR2, of course, yep. is uh, an extremely capable vehicle and we have those with us um, at all times. Um, we've had, as well now, we've revealed the Silverado ZR2, we've had that with us, um, you know, but Hummer I'm, I'm as thinking, well. Like TRX, anything like that? So, you know, we've, we don't, uh, I'll say, we've competed, we've, we've uh, had a little bit of exposure with yeah, those, and vehicles. I'll say, um, in a lot of cases, there's really not a lot of competition. Um, now, in some cases, certainly there is, but no, we, we didn't have a T-Rex available to us. Or Raptor, obviously, those yeah. are the two kind of the people to think about. So, okay, so we're in this rock garden. So, I'm yeah. going to switch you now. We went from off-road mode, we're going to go into terrain mode. Okay. We'll accept that. And what that's going to do is um, raise the vehicle, and then this gives you the kind of that one foot mode, uh, one foot driving. So I'm going to put you in low, which is kind of the more aggressive setting for kind of bigger rocks like this. And then we'll just have you start to creep forward and really just keep it between the cones. And if we need, we can have them spot you, but should be okay. Huh? I think you've oh, been through cool. this yeah. a few times. Yeah. yeah, you can feel how aggressive yeah, the braking it's, is, it's right? Very aggressive. It's almost like an on and off, which is great. It really lets you set the vehicle where you want to set it. So um, you can use your cameras as well if you want. Yeah. It's a virtual spotter. Uh, I'm going to say, whoa, we did hit. Look at that. I was going to say, I'm, we're not going to hit, but I, I'm wrong. It's something completely different to get used to driving this way. Yes. Wow. And of course, underbody protection, so we're, yep. not, we're not doing any damage. Yep. Wow. You're completely uh, up against uh, skid plates in that case. Wow. So did you have to rethink off-roading when, you know, when you've got this much torque? Um, and actually this much weight as well. Uh, was that, you know, was it like a clean sheet where we've got all these 
possibilities so let's see what we can make of it uh, for sure yeah yeah absolutely um you know first and foremost we we needed that travel yeah that was a very key um so 16 inches of ground clearance at its maximum height you said i, I recall 30 inches of ground of 32 inches at its maximum height of water fording yes um yeah up to 32 inches when you're in extract yeah um and 13 inches of travel so we got a package around that right so the drive units and the battery and etc so um, that was a, a key parameter was that the off-road capability needed to be legitimate off-road capability. And what, what kind of air suspension is this? Is it, is it, uh, how to so, describe it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a four-corner air. Yeah. We'll, at the stop sign, we'll take a right. Yep. It's four-corner air uh, with adaptive ride control, uh, which is a semi-active system uh, responding about 500 times a second to road inputs. Um, and it's uh, fully independent. If I uh, park and floor it, I want to see it on the road. Is that okay? I'm sorry. Can I floor it? Can I do like an acceleration test? Um, we'll do that in a second. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm ahead of you, sorry. <laughs> I'm just so... I like, mean, go ahead and gun it. Yeah, if you want to yeah, go ahead and gun yeah, it. That's what I want to do. We'll, we'll do that on the circle track, too. And that's 60 right there. Yeah. That's <laughs> everything right there. It comes fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very uh, quiet. There's yeah. No engine. Obviously, no motor, but no motor noise. So three motors, right? So two in the back, one in the front. Exactly. Why'd you go with like? Why'd you go with three and not four? I, I, I suppose you could have put a motor in each wheel. Really, you don't really need a fourth in the front. With our ability to adjust torque four aft from an efficiency standpoint, when you're just steady state cruising on the highway, it's more efficient to send power to a single front than it is two fronts or four. Like any proper electric vehicle, the Hummer EV pickup, of course, has a frunk. There it goes. And you can use it to store things like your luggage or maybe your groceries, or best of all, those four rooftop panels, they will actually fit inside the frunk. They stack up. So on a beautiful Michigan day like this, you can take the tops off and you can go completely convertible and have a place to store your rooftop panels. How fun and how cool is that? And I have to say, uh, you know, Recently, uh, new car and truck design has kind of created these very small windows, you know what I mean? Yeah. But with these glass windows, it does provide a lot of light. For sure. Absolutely. And then I'm looking at my power meter, so I've got a battery here. I've got, uh, there's a lot of information, actually. Yes. Uh, so All pitch customizable. And, yeah, pitch and roll, uh, speed both in kilometers and in miles per hour, which is good if you're here in Europe. <laughs> Yeah, or, uh, or Canada actually. Uh, a lot of information available through there. It's also available here if you want to move it one way or the other. Um, we'll, we'll show you some of the off-road app features in a little bit. Yeah, it's a very sharp screen. It's uh, and actually, I, I like the two-screen setup. I know a lot of auto manufacturers have been going to you know more is better, but at some point you get too many screens, it becomes very fussy. Sure. So it's, it's nice to have you know only two places where all your information is at. Uh, and once again, one foot driving, which I like. I didn't I didn't check this, but will it come to a complete stop when you stop, or does it crawl? Yeah, we have both. Yep. So you can give it to you. Okay. Yep. All of that. Yeah. Yep. I, I really hate having driving cars that are electric that crawl. So I love the fact that you can just not have to worry about it. Come to a stop. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we have uh, multiple options for you to choose different levels of regen yeah. capability. So this road is intended to be rough and just kind of give you a feel for, and this is a big dip here, but go ahead and take it. It just yeah. absorbs yeah, it. Yeah, it feels very controlled. Uh, it, feel, it feels very, uh, for a heavy, for a very heavy vehicle. It, it, actually, it actually drives smaller than it is.
Netflix fighter in your heat and cool? That's a new one. That is not in our spec. We're going to have to fix that. <laughs> For those people who have to have everything all the time. So this is 75. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so there's some big swells back here. Yeah. So just feel like how uh, it, it kind of settles everything in. Uh, yeah. Are adaptive. Are there different ride conditions? Can there, change it? There, yes, absolutely. So if we go yeah. into my mode, you can customize your suspension. So this will be a little more on the firmer side. A little, a little, more, more, a little more control. Yeah, a little more control. Yeah, you can feel that. And then uh, if you wanted to go into the other one here, it would be... The suspension to travel a little bit more for you. So, so, so that's like 1970s DMC. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> As we start to curve left, I'll have you actually go straight onto the gravel up here, okay. and we'll do a quick driver change. Okay. So if you want, just um, right up here is good. Swap real fast. And you said you can control how much regen there is? Yes. Yeah, you can. The great thing about electric cars and trucks is instant torque. This vehicle has a thousand horsepower and about 1200 pound foot of torque which is crazy and that also means that from zero to 60 it'll go well you know what let me show you it's enough to give you tunnel vision all right i'll i'll cut to the chase three seconds you know for for us you know we've we've uh, owned probably now maybe maybe 10 electric vehicles uh, you know we start with the california compliance cars and we've gone through three model uh we've got the model x the model y and model three right three teslas um and uh, it's fascinating to see the development you know because th like the california compliance cars were basically regular cars right that had an electric powertrain sure with like maybe 50 to 80 miles of range and then you got tesla that kind of you know broke the mold and then then allowed everybody else to come in and kind of see the possibilities you have to give them up for them right they were the sure. first to be there and now you kind of see this next set of and i've always been wondering why is everybody building electric crossover so it's great to see somebody building an electric truck and electric SUV you know it's nice yeah. as opposed to the usual kind of you know oh, I got a little bit of a crossover well and that was kind of the goal right we wanted yeah. to bring in new new people to the EV space yeah yeah so you've just seen a little bit of a small taste of what it's capable off-road uh -huh. um, a little bit of the comfort on road and then why don't we do lots to freedom real quick so to get into it I mean WTF uh, I got to say that what's the freedom yeah WTF I know <laughs> so we'll do a double press here uh -huh. of the traction button audio I'll acknowledge here that we're gonna enter this so now the vehicle is gonna start to lower it's gonna go down almost three and a half inches I can see it going down yep um, so as it's coming down the uh, cooling system is optimizing the the battery and the power electronics and driving it's uh, all those temperatures right getting ready to unlock a little extra power here like, now like blast off in a rocket exactly so the driver coach comes up here yep. tells me to brake harder I've now reached my braking level, I start to increase my throttle, and my seat is shaking more and more and more as I go deeper into the pedal. So now I'm at 11. So when you're ready, go. I'll launch Good. it. Yeah, launch Three, it, bad boy. Two, one. <laughs> so that was 80, <laughs> 77. Now you guys said that was like three seconds. Yeah, yeah, that felt like three seconds. When you start, every time you start getting tunnel vision, yeah. then you know you're like below four seconds. Uh -huh. Sit back. Exactly. Dial up 53 if you like chill. I'm serious. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, you know, you're old, 25 like me. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then just, you know, let the car do all the driving. Yep. And this will be the first uh, GM product, right, with the newest version of Super Cruise, where you have actually lane change ability. Automatically, change. automatically change lanes yes. for you, which is pretty badass. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's bizarre the first time you experience it, but it, you quickly become very appreciative of it. It's, it's pretty impressive. So um, from here, you know, you can just kind of quickly demonstrate um, just your passing capability, right? So yeah. 70 to 90 uh, in that period of time. And we are in, uh, we call it adrenaline mode. So this is within my mode, you have all the customization, right? Of the steering suspension, acceleration, and interior sound. Um, adrenaline is, of course, our most aggressive. So this would be your level below lots to freedom, one level below lots to freedom in terms of capability. So we have four modes, relax, normal, adrenaline, and then lots to freedom. Will it maintain that zero to 60 or that drag? How long have you doing that? Yeah. Will the batteries overheat or will it, will, nope. it, will it detune itself, I guess? Yeah, so it'll always protect itself. Yeah. Um, it will, uh, depends on your state of charge when you start, right? Right. Um, but you will actually have some pretty consistent numbers for a decent amount of runs. Um, and then as things are warming up, it will just automatically derate. Um, a little you can still get the uh, experience and everything. And, and frankly, subjectively, between feeling a 3.2 and a 3.5 or a 3.4 and a 3.6, uh, you won't notice that much subjectively. But uh, but yeah, they, they actually, our data is showing that uh, we are quite consistent. Now the good news is this is a full-size truck with a five-foot bed. So if you want to carry things like motorcycles or, well, whatever you put in your bed, you can do that with this truck. But there is a little bit of bad news. You can get two spare tire carriers if you're Baha'ing it, but from the factory, because of the way that, well, the batteries and the drivetrain work together, there is no spare tire. If you had, you know, like 50-50 split, it'd be hard to do that. You could sure. get a tail out like that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, you can bias it uh, floor aft as needed based on, you know, what calibrations you're dialing up. That must um, be a lot of fun, especially when you're in places, let's say you're in the sand, right, and it's wide open. That's got to be a hoot. Yes. I mean, this yes. is also a hoot, but especially in the sand. Yeah, they all, uh, there's a number of different off-road scenarios where we were just kind of blown away at the capability right out of the gate, right? Right out of the box. And then once you start tuning it and really getting the refinement there, it's like, okay, uh, this is another level. So, so let me ask you, I mean, there's all, you know, we, we live in a really great country with a lot of off-roading, right? And there's all kinds of, so if you're in the south, southeast, a lot of mudding, right? If you're in the southwest, it's a lot of sand. Uh -huh. If you're in Colorado, it's a lot of rock crawling. Where does this excel or, you know, where do you think that it takes it to the next level out of those three possibilities? So, um, really, that the, the gravel and the sand are, are pretty incredible. Um, the kind of bread and butter. Um, being able to get it to the limit, hold it sideways, uh, have, have a little fun with that. That's really, um, first and foremost, a high priority. Secondarily, um, honestly, the rock crawling. Um, we got, like I said, normal force under these tires, and uh, when you got the grip and you got the torque, you got the capability. So uh, everything else on paper, the numbers line up. So even at Moab, it's it's also at home there. So um, really, it, it's intended to be kind of a all-around well, beast. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. To, uh, you know, be one of the first to to get behind the wheel of this, and uh, yeah, I, I I can't wait to take it to Moab myself. <laughs> yeah, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> like run Hell's Revenge and see what it's like. You know, <laughs> and, and this is not the real world, of course, but it's it's a really great taste. Thank Good. you, guys. Absolutely, my pleasure. Now, for all of you truck guys and truck gals out there, there are a lot of numbers because let's face it, trucks are about numbers that we don't know. We don't know how much it tows. We don't know how much it weighs. A lot. We don't know the truck's payload. All that is still coming. 
but the number that we do know is a very important one and that is 350 as in the charge rate 350 kilowatt at best the top of the line Porsche Taycan by well 350 minus 270 I'm awful of math you guys figure it out the other number we know is that it costs 112,000 and that it will be available for you to purchase before the end of the year so guys let me know what you think in the comments below thank you GMC for letting me get my hands on this bad boy and thank you guys for watching as always this is Roman reporting for the fast lane truckers at off-road one of the two see you guys next time ciao